And then, uh, so who wants to go first? Just um, telling us who, who you are and what your go-to strategies are and what you're involved I'll go ahead and do in. it. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, software engineer by day currently. Um, I won't say where because um, reasons. And um, uh, basically right now I'm shorting everything. Actually not tasty trade way. I'm doing, I'm just buying puts. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm all in on that. Not not like all in. It's seven thousand dollars worth, but I look at the returns and it's ridiculous. So anyway, that's my quick introduction. That's what I'm doing on onward and upward. Rod, how about Rod, one of the one of the Johns? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name's John. Um, I uh, I have smaller accounts and I'll sub sub uh, ten thousand, so five to ten. Uh, my main strategies have ma mainly been you know defined risk in, in some of the big ETFs. Um, but you know, in the lower priced underlying, like, um, some of the oil ETFs, I've been able to, to go make it to, to really take advantage of the taste of trade away. And that's what I've been, uh, been trying to do. And yeah. What do you do when you're not trading? Oh, I'm, I'm an equity research associate. An equity research associate? Y yeah. We're uh, for an investment bank. Okay. We're just glorified uh, uh, name callers, pretty much. We just say bye, we regardless. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> it's when you get on the phone with us. That's when you. That's when you hear the good stuff. You're like you're like a junior Kramer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Bye, bye, bye. Okay. All right. Bye, well, bye, bye, bye. welcome, John. And um, who's next? I'll go next. This is okay. John Yoke. Yoke runs with hope. <laughs> and some other stuff. Um, I'm retired. Uh, I'm a mathematician. Okay. I worked as a quantitative engineer for many years in the defense industry. I've been retired for nine years. I've been a swimmer since 2003 and an equity investor before that. And uh, basically, I hang around the house. Did you say you were a mathematician, John? Yes. Okay. And so I do not get scared away by any of the quantitative stuff that flies by either on um, Tasty Trade or other stuff that I read, you know, all this gamma awesome. stuff and whatever. I kind of understand all of that. Yeah. Wow. It's we need to. Okay. Yes, please. Um, what, are you, uh, what are you doing right now in the markets, John? Well, I'm primarily an index trader because I like things simple. So I've yeah. been trading the S&P and the NASDAQ for years, right? Um, I guess I got that way when I was still working so that you could easily find quotes, right? And, and follow what your book, your portfolio is doing. And what I've been doing now is basically uh, covered puts, mm. right? And and the way I do that is I'm short the MES future, and I sell SPY put spreads against that. So What's it's the MES? Of short MES and short out of the money SPY put spreads. And it's just a matter of how far out of the money the put spreads are and how wide they are. I just modulate those parameters and that changes the delta of that position. What's the MES? What's the MES? It's the uh, micro ES future. Oh, the micro E. Oh, micro ES. Right. So the micro ES fits well with the one lot of a spy put spread. Oh. Notional of five, right? Yeah, that's interesting. What's that, John? Or Timothy? It's the five it's so it's five to one. So every time it moves one tick you get it's five dollars. So yeah. regular e, regular ES is fifty, micro is five. Correct. Right. I see. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm immediately, I think it's part of good networking is getting to know kind of who people are and being able to use them as part of kind of as thought leaders for our, for our ideas and things. <laughs> well, I'm Dale Perryman and I've been doing corporate training 
in development for 25 years and uh, have been involved in investing. I bought my first mutual fund in 1988 and had to drive to the library to research it because there was no internet. Um, and now, you know, in 2000, I was kind of a buy and hold guy until 2008 and with the big crash, my friend said, well, that worked for a hedge fund. What are you doing to hedge? And I said, what's a hedge? <laughs> and started selling covered calls was my first strategy in probably 2009 and then through probably 2012 and then started opening up my strategies. I, can, I think I met Tasty Trade somewhere around 2015. And then, um, so now I, I trade uh, um, 11 or 12 accounts now, uh, all of them friends and family as a volunteer. <laughs> and, um, and Mike and I uh, know each other. So we've been kind of working on kind of a site that helps us to measure some things and, and network. And, and uh, so right now we're running a, just for fun with a group of my poker friends. Cause that's another thing I do is play poker. And we, we've got 10 poker players on primarily poker players that are running a options trading contest. We did a, a like a hundred dollar buy-in. It's almost like a fantasy football kind of thing, running a paper trader. So we started off with $250,000 and there's one guy on there that's just a big YOLO better. And uh, you know, he's run it up to over a million dollars just, uh, and paper trade and so I'm not sure that any of the guys are really learning about good strategies which is a downside for us because we were really trying to promote education and learning but we'll see how that goes in the future so that's me cool uh, I'm Mike Carmindra um, like Dale said I've known him for a while we're working on some stuff um, for traders I'm a entrepreneur slash software developer slash uh, uh, well I my day job is a software engineer but I trade and uh, and I'm you know I build stuff on the side so um, hopefully and you were I'm a tennis back. player before the at least COVID yeah yeah, yeah. I was an avid tennis player and haven't done that in a while but um, I, I've traded pretty much every strategy in the book and I'm trying to figure out right now actually right now I'm trying to figure out what really is my go-to strategy and um, I've done a ton of strangles and I've done the whole tasty trade way. And, and I, I think that has its value, but I don't think that's the end all be all strategy. Um, short premium could really, really get you in trouble in times like these. And uh, um, I've seen it happen with a lot of tasty traders. So I'm just trying to figure out how to prevent large drawdowns with different strategies and I'm trading diagonals right now. So, um, that's me and we'll, I'm still figuring out what, what I exactly will, will do in the, in the remainder of 2020. I want to be short, but, um, you know, it's a tough trade right now. So figure that out soon. So maybe now if we just do kind of a round table of, uh, kind of what, and some of you already mentioned kind of your, your strategies that you're doing are currently, um, if you didn't mention that, then we just kind of have some popcorn um, around. Well, also maybe I was wondering like, is there anything in particular, somebody, anything in particular that you guys are trying to get out of this? Yeah, or desired results of our yeah. Zoom get togethers. Yeah, I, I wanted to, uh, I found it really interesting, you know, just the, the discussion of uh, just some of the alternatives for some of the tasty trade methods, just because um, as a, uh, you know, as a follower and, and, you know, being part of the tasty trade Slack, I, I always like, um, you know, we're all contrarians at heart. And so I, I like to even be contrarian of the own tasty trade method. And I want to hear how you guys have, uh, you know, been contrarians to the, to the, to the actual methodology and, and what ways, you know, whether it's in sizing or in strategy or in underlyings or, you know, just what, what ways you guys are kind of going away yeah. from the grain. I like that. What do you guys think of the whole tasty trade philosophy and, you know, what they teach and all that stuff? I, I liked it to start with. <laughs> to start with. Well, yeah. Like, so, I mean, it, it uh, to, for me, it was like they, all the, 
all the learning and, mm. you know, kind of dipping in and like, I, um, really they, they, the, the way they, they, they taught it all was, was I think good. And I think, I, I think I posted a couple days ago was like, it works great if IV is like swinging around between like 14 to 25 or whatever. Yeah. And, and those kind of environments. That's, a, and that's then, actually, that's actually about, that's the kind of not the range I was actually thinking too. Somewhere yeah. around, somewhere around there. Right? Yeah. Um, and then, it, but it, it, it gets crazy. That, yeah. It gets tough. Yeah. It gets tough. Or, or, or gets too low. If it gets too low, then you're yeah. just blowing, blowing out of your calls. And then when I start all my calls, when I have an entire year of all my calls being blown out, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. I need to do something yeah. different. Right. And then right. what is that? And that's still an and, ongoing and, question. And the problem was for the most of Tasty Trade life, it's been in the low 15s, the, the, uh, the volatility until yeah. recently. Yeah. So they've had some bad timing in terms of like, you know, teaching this in, in, a, in a really low volatile environment was setting people up for trouble. Well, there, so. There's also the conflict of interest there where they're like, yep. they iron condors are great for commissions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that, but you know, but, but then, they, that, but then they started to have the lowest commissions on the market. So it's like, eh, right. okay, I'll still use them as a broker. Right. And, right. and because, because toss did is like, Oh, you want to trade futures? Fuck you. <laughs> You know, so yeah. and what where, where Tasty works is like, oh yeah, whatever, go ahead. Yeah. No, so but it, so I, I that's certainly gone off the rails. I still use that as a core idea, like oh, I'm gonna try putting on a strangle. I definitely think yeah. strangles are the way are are great. And all in my ags and stuff, I tend to use strangles. So wheat, corn, and soy, it's usually strangles in there. Natural gas mm -hmm. usually strangles. Um. Well, Timothy, that's, that's it sounds right. like uh, we are trading similarly. I am a follower of T Tasty Trade. I, I I still like their stuff, even though it's been painful for me. There's been moments where I've questioned things. Uh, I I tend to find more opportunities and probably trade larger and bigger and more, uh, more of my account than I should um, at times. But I love strangles I've kind of gone from uh, 20 I used to sell 20 to 30 uh, Delta strangles and with the volatility I've started selling 10 Delta strangles um, in high vol things and you know I think if I was to say the three or four strategies that I use most often is poor man's covered calls for bullish strategies, for things I'm bullish on, poor man's covered puts, uh, for things I'm bearish on, and then um, strangles, strangles for things that I'm neutral, neutral on. And um, I vary anywhere from, my goal is to vary anywhere from minus 200 beta weighted deltas to positive 200 beta weighted deltas in uh, my trading account, which is now a $50,000 trading account. But the other 10 accounts, some of them are larger. Um, IRA, obviously, I, and I use TOS, so I can't trade strangles. So I do iron condors on neutral strategies there. And sometimes I'll sell naked puts on things if I need some bearish beta weighted deltas. So uh, that's kind of my go-to strategies. The, I uh, went from being very bearish to, you know, when there was a crash to the upside, uh, I didn't see this V. Uh, first, I think that I was in a bit of denial on the severity of COVID and then uh, thinking that it was going to bounce back. And then when I started realizing the severity, I went, bearish just in time for the 30 percent uh, swing up so that made me uber bearish uh, when it crashed to the upside and then now with the kind of uh, then once I almost gave up like it's not gonna correct uh, then it it's so it's it's swingy um, and some of my timing not that it's some of its hindsight thinking uh, but it's caused me to be swinging from overly bullish to overly bearish. Um, and when to make those adjustments is challenging. 
what, what's the uh, mathematician think of mathematician think of the taxi trade away? <laughs> Good question. Uh, I've been following them for a long time. Pretty much from day one. Yeah. And I mean, it must be good, right? I mean, they do all the numbers, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, what is the Tasty Trade method? Uh, That's you know, a good question. Tasty Trade is Tom's trip, right? Yeah. It's, it's created. Tom has a lot of great attributes. He's got mm -hmm. a great attitude, he's got huge energy. Yeah. His, uh, his wish for the world, you know, all of that stuff is fantastic. I do truly believe he, he means well and he's a good, you know, he has, he has the retail trader in his, um, you know, he's, he's behind the small guy. I believe that. Yeah. And I believe that there's, that there's something missing for the absolute beginner. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, like having a coach, sort of a coach. You want to start learning tennis? Mm. Uh, what, should, what should you do for the first six months or a year? Mm -hmm. right? You don't just start selling strangles. Strangles. In, <laughs> in, in a, a $5,000, $10,000 dollar account. Right? Or, yeah. How about Tesla? Sell some Tesla strangles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually uh, have having some some college buddies when I try to put them on Tasty Trade because okay. um, they were just the Robin Hood YOLO, you know, Wall Street bet kind of guys, and yeah. so I knew that they had an appetite for risk. So right. when I put them on options, you know, after they had gone through that initial learning curve, they this was um, a, the, the, a big a big group of my friends that got into it, or maybe when. Uh, <laughs> Uh, like a year and a half ago and 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 you know when volatility was low for them they they saw like okay well we buy premium now you know like that's the tasty trade method and and it was hard for me to to, to always try to say you know what I, technically yes but i keep on hearing even from the network you know you always stay short i mean uh the vix was going at you know historical levels like i mean it's just going like super low and and, and they were still shorting still shorting still shorting and then uh, my professor, my professor of finance, would would tell me, you know what, it it, it only works until it doesn't, and 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 shorting yeah. shorting vol is you get you get those small wins, but that one big loss it would always wipes you out. Right. And 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 a lot of my friends, um, the good thing is that you know Tasty Trade obviously knows that, and 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 they they try to you know advocate for you know trading small, but the problem mm -hmm. is staying small mm -hmm. is the problem, and and you know with, with trading uh, small, trading small is one of the the most kind of confusing things you can tell yeah somebody. yeah it's yeah and and, and it's <laughs> to say oh yeah you know when when um when volatility is really small yeah. you have to have like 20 percent of your portfolio only out there and and right. for, and for smaller is, accounts yeah how, nothing 20 percent is i can't nothing. even do a defined risk trade while staying That's, in the you know parameters of being less than five percent yeah. of my whole portfolio you know um so it it, it was difficult for my friends to start there and they would ask me and, 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 you know, I was supposed to be the, the, the guy that always followed Casey trade. And, and that was kind of difficult to, to kind of put them through and let them know the reality of, you know what, it, it kind of, it swings ups and downs of, of what we do sometimes. And even, even the Tasty trade community, when I would look at the Slack, it'd be lots of discussion on, Oh, well, you know, where should we diverge from this strategy in this scenario or, you know, in this, in these times. So I'd like to hear you guys <laughs> input on that. I want to say uh, something John said, Rodriguez said that um, I, I've realized in the last couple of years, right? Basically what affects option prices is price movement of the underlying, IV changes of the underlying and time, right? Uh, yep. B, yeah. BVT. The price changes, noticeable price changes happen much more often than noticeable volatility changes. But yeah. when the volatility changes happen, that shit kills you. If that's you're not key. Positioned, <laughs> that's you're not that's positioned right. It kills you. Yep. 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 Okay. And I found that out with a seventy-five thousand dollar intraday drawdown. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Luckily, most know. of it was recovered on the same day. The same day. <laughs> yeah. And you know the rest of it over the next few months. Was that the day when the VIX jumped? like to 80 it, it was back in <laughs> january of 16 i think oh i was still at toss uh, my positions were way too big and way too naked 
Yep. And, way too big, way too naked. Yeah. That's that was yeah. my two thousand eight portfolio. Right. Yeah. And and I mess around with the R programming language and I did a <laughs> I'm in the process of doing a Black Shoals model. Plus I've done some pricing examples and I found out that put spreads, out of money put spreads have half the volatility, half the vega mm -hmm. of the naked leg alone. So basically everything I sell in SPY is spread. Uh, very little bit is naked. Yeah. yeah. I'm moving so, away from naked, not a lot of naked stuff too. I mean, yeah. It, and it, it was, it was interesting. I, I was talking to Dr. Jim um, when I was trading iron condors being smaller and, and it, you know, the probability of profit a lot of the time, it was just a coin flip. And, and I thought, well, how, how is, for what I'm getting, you know, when I, being a poker player, you just always think of, you know, EV and, and, you know, when, my friends would like they would try to mess with me and for the non-poker players ev is expected value mm. yeah yeah so yeah and, if, and if, a fellow poker player deal <laughs> yeah i know that's bizarre <laughs> and it, it, they would say like because it's a simple formula and, and it's intuitive to think about it say you know the probability of winning times what you get when you win and times plus the probability of losing times you know what you'll lose when you when you lose and and they would say this is a negative ev play um this trade and and it was just uh, it was hard to reconcile and i asked dr jim and he said you know what that's what kind of happens with with uh defined strategies just because you're paying so much to cover yourself but i said well kind of that's that's the point you know like then then what's the whole reason to define risk if you can't you just just might as well just buy the stock or short the stock and it was it's kind of difficult to to stay always defined and you see all these people you know making so much from the premium on on just you know shorting naked and it's uh yeah it's hard yeah, your, prob your probability of profit goes up by being naked. Uh, you're Absolutely. giving away a, a portion of your pop by defining uh, those risks. I guess, if anything, uh, or you're still getting positive theta decay, uh, even though it's, it's a 50-50 shot there on an iron yeah. condor. Um, one of the things that, that Mike and I have experimented with is we've created some snapshots of our portfolio. So we're using the API of um, uh, TOS. So to, we can take a snapshot. So we can kind of look back, like kind of what uh, Mr. Yelp was talking about. We no can, with hope. You can uh, take a Yope. snapshot and then you can, oh, so Yope, sorry. Yope. Rise with hope. Rise with hope. <laughs> and um, so it kind of enables you to remember kind of these drawdowns and times and what was happening and what VIX was. And so it's kind of a, a trading journal on steroids for learning purposes. John, John, what do you, um, John Yob, what do you think of, so I, I'd like your opinion on this actually. Um, I'm trying to figure out basically, I, I feel like I've been negative Vega basically most of my trading career. Um, and I'm changing that actually, um, due to what we just talked about, what you talked about, about the, you know, the a sudden increase in vol, the sudden increase in volatility, I think is the one thing that nobody ever prepares for and nobody ever, you know, gets, gets out of, you know, without getting very hurt. So like, I'm thinking positive theta always, positive vega and delta neutral. So what are your thoughts on that? Because Vega, obviously Vega negative is, you know, you sell strangles and you're negative Vega and you're exposed to increases in volatility. Your positive Vega, you know, increase in volatility helps you. Um, I don't that? have, I don't have a clear set of numbers, but how can you get reasonable yeah. positive Vega and positive Vega? Yeah. That, through, that, that's through diagonals and calendars. Okay, I don't do those trades. Okay. I, I will tell you, do you follow um, Von Kaufman at Theo Trade? Who? Von Kaufman. Don, 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 Don Kaufman. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I have watched some of his stuff. I wouldn't consider myself a follower, uh, but I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was great. He was with Thinkorswim and, uh, 
he's a friend of Tom's and all that, but they've gone separate ways. Uh, you should watch his weekly videos. Like this weekend, he put out a thing on YouTube. So go look at Theo Trade, Don Kaufman's thing. Anyway, uh, sometimes he flips around. He follows the SPX weekly expected move, right? So on Friday, you can see seven days later what the expected move is for SPX. And when he thinks the options are pricing in a, an expected move that's too low, he will be buying Vega and premium in the form of ratio back spreads, right? Tasty Trade talks about selling ratio spreads, but if you turn that around and buy those spreads, it's a ratio back spread and you profit for outsized movement in the underlying. Is it positive um, beta? No, no, right? It's probably negative beta. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it, uh, correct, it, would you consider Don Kaufman more of a technical trader or is he, because uh, it seems like he use, is, reads more charts. Yeah, he's, he's quantitative in the sense, he calls himself a quantitative trader because he knows a lot about the numbers of what goes on in portfolios and how positions work and what's going to happen if this changes and that changes. And that's a huge difference because Tom Sosnoff is essentially, um, what's the right word? He knows nothing about quantitative stuff. Yeah, he's not the math he, guy. He really doesn't. Right. Yeah. Um, he's kind of a practitioner uh, without understanding kind of how, how it works. But um, have you ever subscribed to Don Kaufman's stuff? No. No, yeah. no, no, no. You just I watched think I think for 49 dollars a month, there is a huge library. You get um, live trading room. Uh, you know, what are we doing today? What are we doing this week? I think it's a great thing in general, but uh, not for me. Do, yeah. do you guys, now, uh, now that you bring that up, do you guys subscribe to anybody right now that, that, that you think is worth, you know, kind of the... I subscribe to uh, Slope Charts, Slope of Hope. Oh, um, Tim. Yeah, because I just like the charting program, and uh, there's a couple of little features in there. Can't you? Don't you get that on Toss? I like sure. the charting program. It's nice and clean and visually pleasing, and uh, I think it's worth twenty nine dollars a month. What about what about you guys? Have you got any success? John and Tim, Timothy, with uh, any kind of subscription-based services out there? I don't. I don't do anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah personally, I I already feel that uh, more people you listen to, per, the more people I listen to, the more confused I get with uh, you know contradicting signals. So I try yeah. to stay simple, stupid. So. Yeah. You know, I no. I. I subscribe to some of the um, Facebook groups on uh, like Tasty Nation option trader kind of thing. And have any of you guys experimented with any of the zero days to expiration trades? Yeah. Have you been able to make it work for you? For one month. It was amazing. <laughs> okay. So until, it's, until, it's not until something. Both. It's not something that you continued doing? Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was like a uh, couple thousand dollars a day in profits. And I was and like, then, all right. You know, I'm like, all right, I know I'm not a genius. I'm going to keep then, doing this until something happens. And then, and then it all you have to tell us. Good. You have to tell us about the day you stopped doing it, though. <laughs> yeah. Like January 6th. Like, so I started in, 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 in the end of November and started ramping it up. I'm like, okay. So I did bigger. everything. <laughs> yeah, I did. You got bigger. Um, you know, but yeah, but then, you know, then I can put stops on them and stuff like that. So I'm going to be yeah. like, all right, I'm getting out at 2X or 3X or whatever. Right. But then um, I have a day job. I can't watch them all the time. Sure. You know, and so there's all these things that kind of had like everything. Uh, it, it seemed like he was like, you know, the gravy train kind of thing. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> again, I'm not a genius. So I'm, I'm going to keep thinking like, well, it's still working. And then it ended up like a $5,000 loss one day or something. And it just got, it yeah. just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then, um, one day it was like down 20 K 
And then I, I forgot, fortunately forgot to take off my long call that was protecting me. Forgot. Yeah. yeah, which is great because it shot and blew past. So I had, you know, 20 contracts on or whatever. I get out of the, get out of the short side, realize this gigantic loss, and then it marches forward and blows right past. And I yeah. got, at that point, I'm like, all right, nope. <laughs> and now I'm only down at two or three contracts where they're kind of synthetic naked, where they're like really wide, but I only do like two or three. So um, you're still doing it? A, a way smaller though. I went back okay. smaller and now it's the other way. Now it's like because of the directionality is so crazy in the market. Yeah. It is now actually zero or one or actually I can do it because I can do it every day. I go zero or one, one day, t one DTE. Uh -huh. And it's purely directional. It's buying a call, buying a put and well, put the brackets on really tight and that's what I'm at right now. Oh, I, are, I, started, I started doing them and uh, was experiencing some success. So I thought, well, I'll set a goal just to pay my mortgage with uh, zero DTE and then it started not working and <laughs> then, I, then I stopped doing it for a while. Yesterday I thought, well, I'll do one. It's, I woke up early on Friday and so I did it in my IRA because I have some because it takes up a lot of buying power, as with, depending upon what, what your spread is. So, uh, and I, I know Tammy uh, Chil Chambliss, um, who's yeah. kind of the advocate yeah. for it on Facebook. And David Sun, too. David, David Sun. Is, and, yeah. and Mike and I have both talked to Tammy and talked to David and kind of consider them friends. I've had lunch with Tammy a couple of times. So, you know, I followed Tammy's, her back testing and things and read her work. So yesterday I, 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 I started off, I bought the best put I could get at five cents. And then I sold, I think a five Delta put against it, uh, collected a, like a buck Oh five, you know, and it, and then, uh, then I did the call and kind of did a call for like 33 cents and just did three, I did three contracts and it stopped out in the afternoon on the put side. And then I decided to put another one on, and it, it got stopped out. So when I first go back, uh, even though it's supposed to have like an 80, 80 to 85 percent probability of profit, uh, you know, I got stopped out twice. So I ended up, I guess, losing about 900 bucks yesterday. Um, so it's kind of like, well, maybe I don't know if I can make this work for me. So every now and then I'll do something that I consider a little bet. Um, it's almost uh, like an experiment to see if I want to continue doing it. So I think for me, jury's still out on zero DTs. I won't say I won't try them again, but uh, it doesn't seem that I can make it work consistently. Yeah. What's, uh, the, e what's the EV on that? <laughs> yeah. What's the expected value on that, right? <laughs> well, what, one of the things I did when it was working, so I had time. So that's one thing that's like, I could be right. on my computer or whatever. The other thing was that one that I was learning from one guy, cause he was another, I forget his name, but he, he disappeared from the, the Facebook group group that, so he basically, if you have nothing on else on SPX, let's say, and you can have a clear uh, Delta reading on it. So nothing else coming, gumming it up. You basically try to keep that Delta at like under 80. That's what I did. So no matter oh, what happened, so no matter what happened, it was like plus minus 80. So if it starts going against you, I would add, I would add, maybe they're cheap, you know, really, maybe they're really narrow call spreads or narrow, very narrow put spreads, uh, you know, so they'd be adjusted somewhere, but I would always try to get it under 80. And on those days, it would be ridiculous. Those were like $6,000 days where it'd just be like, you just pile on everything. And if some go in the money, so what? You've made, you know, you put on the extra delta to kind of neutralize. Uh, so you're either buying or selling additional ones to adjust your delta? Yep. It was actually only only selling new spreads. Sometimes uh, I would like... So you're selling a new spread to change your delta to the way you wanted it. Uh, yeah, just you because it's a new delta neutral trade, right? So I would just yeah. keep piling on. And at some point... Obviously, I you know, run out of buying power eventually. I mean, some of these trades, literally, it's like seventy k buying power for this one trade. Right. But, but so the but the thing is, it's that's not seventy k in risk. Yeah, I really. Guess. Yeah, you know, it's so um, it's just what yeah. they're holding to manage the brokerage right. risk. Right, and so and and so realizing that, and 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 you know, my finger on the button. And this is actually before the brackets were in. So, um, it, 
uh, then later when Brackets came on the platform, I was able to, to use that to be like, okay, well, two or three X. Then I started to notice three X isn't even real. Real That's not even viable because it's gone down to three X. Like early in the morning, if it swings a little bit, you'll, you'll hit a three X loss. You'll be stopped out. And then you'll go up to your calls and your, the calls will stop out at three X and then it will sink back and be right back in the middle. Yeah. And like, well, if I would have left, it would have been fine. Um, granted. So there's always that weird thing. Like, well, are you, is it going to be in or out? And there's that whole game, you know, the whole game, whole stock market game, but then keep just looking at your Delta um, and, you know, levering in, lever, you know, la layering or whatever and call it, buying tranches on both sides, getting in and out and kind of, so you kind of dip your toes in and then you straight, then you just manage Delta the rest of the day. And you just, you basically take losses or not. And maybe you have a zero day. And there was some cases where I'd be like, you know what? This is not going the way I want to go. I'm just going to get out and and then, you know, only down 100 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Tammy, but, Tammy told me that she got a call yesterday from a person that said, uh, you know, I'm trading these zero DTEs. Uh, I'm down $7,000. Uh, what do I do? You know, and it's like, how long have you been trading? Um, a couple months, you know, and so she, that's kind of why she put that whole thing on Facebook about an analogy to flying and, uh, you know, I don't know, use stock losses and because I think she wants to help people, but at the same time, she feels bad when some newbies really get hurt doing the strategy. Yeah. But it's, it's tempting, but I'm, I'm now I'm a little more directional uh, just because the, it, I think the zero DTEs, I'll wait till it's a slow grind up and, and VIX is 11. Then I know they work. Yeah. I think that's, I think well, that's when they work. And I, I was fine. It's uh yeah, it's hard. Yeah, your pro your probability of profit goes up by being naked. Uh, you're Absolutely. giving away a, a portion of your pop by defining uh, those risks. I guess if anything, uh, or you're still getting positive theta decay, uh, even though it's it's a fifty fifty shot there on an iron mm -hmm. condor. Um, one of the things that that Mike and I have experimented with is we've created some snapshots of our portfolio. So we're using the API of um, uh, TOS. So to, we can take a snapshot so we can kind of look back like kind of what uh, Mr. Yelp was talking about. You, we oh, can, with hope. you can uh, take a Yelp. snapshot and then you can, oh, so Yope, sorry. Yelp. Rise with hope. Rise with hope. <laughs> and um, so it kind of enables you to, remember kind of these drawdowns and times and what was happening and what VIX was. And so it's kind of a, a trading journal on steroids for learning purposes. John, John, what do you, um, John Yoke, what do you think of, so I, I'd like your opinion on this actually. Um, I'm trying to figure out basically that I, I feel like I've been negative Vega basically most of my trading career. Um, and I'm changing that actually, um, due to what we just talked about, what you talked about, about the, you know, the a sudden increase in vol the sudden increase in volatility, I think is the one thing that nobody ever prepares for and nobody ever, you know, gets, gets out of, you know, without getting very hurt. So like, I'm thinking positive theta always positive Vega and <laughs> Delta neutral. So what are your thoughts on that? Because Vega, obviously Vega negative is, you know, you sell strangles and you're negative Vega and you're exposed to increases in volatility. Your positive Vega, you know, increase in volatility helps you. Um, I don't have, I don't have a clear set of numbers, but how can you get reasonable yeah. positive Vega and positive Theta? Yeah. That, through, uh, through diagonals and calendars. Okay, I don't do those trades. Okay. I, I will tell you, do you follow um, Von Kaufman at Theo Trade? Who? Von Kaufman. Don, 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 Don Kaufman? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I have watched some of his stuff. I wouldn't consider myself a follower, uh, but I'll, 
uh, yeah. Yeah, he was great. He was with Thinkorswim, and uh, he's a friend of Tom's and all that, but they've gone separate ways. Uh, you should watch his weekly videos. Like this weekend, he put out a thing on YouTube. So go look at Theo Trade, Don Kaufman's thing. Anyway, uh, sometimes he flips around. He follows the SPX weekly expected move, right? So on Friday, you can see seven days later what the expected move is for SPX. And when he thinks the options are pricing in a, an expected move that's too low, he will be buying Vega and premium in the form of ratio back spreads, right? Tasty Trade talks about selling ratio spreads, but if you turn that around and buy those spreads, it's a ratio back spread and you profit for outsized movement in the underlying. Is it positive um, theta? No, right? No, it's probably negative theta. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. Correct me, it, would you consider Don Kaufman more of a technical trader or is he, because uh, it seems like he use, is, reads more charts. Yeah, he's, he's quantitative in the sense, he calls himself a quantitative trader because he knows a lot about the numbers of what goes on in portfolios and how positions work and what's going to happen if this changes and that changes. And that's a huge difference because Tom Sosnoff is essentially, um, what's the right word? He knows nothing about quantitative stuff. Yeah, he's not the math he, guy. He really doesn't. Right. Yeah. Um, he's kind of a practitioner uh, without understanding kind of how, how it works. But um, have you ever subscribed to Don Kaufman's stuff? No. No, no, no. no. You just I watched think I think for $49 a month, there is a huge library. You get um, live trading room. Uh, you know, what are we doing today? What are we doing this week? I think it's a great thing in general, but uh, not for me. Do, yeah. do you guys, now, uh, now that you bring that up, do you guys subscribe to anybody right now that, that, that you think is worth, you know, kind of the... I subscribe to uh, Slope Charts, Slope of Hope. Oh, um, Tim. Yeah, because I just like the charting program, and uh, there's a couple of little features in there. Can't you? Don't you get that on Toss? I like the charting program. It's nice and clean and visually pleasing, and uh, I think it's worth twenty nine dollars a month. What about what about you guys? Have you got any success? John and Tim, Timothy, with uh, any kind of subscription-based services out there? I don't, I don't do anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Personally, I, I already feel that uh, more people you listen to, per, the more people I listen to, the more confused I get with uh, you know contradicting signals. So I try yeah. to stay simple, stupid. So yeah, you know, I, no. I, I subscribe to some of the um, Facebook groups on. Uh, like Tasty Nation option trader kind of thing. And have any of you guys experimented with any of the zero days to expiration trades? Yeah. Have you been able to make it work for you? For one month, it was amazing. <laughs> okay. So until, it's, until, it's, not until some, well. it's not something that you continued doing? Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was like a uh, couple thousand dollars a day in profits and I was and like then, all right you know I'm like all right I know I'm not a genius I'm gonna keep then, doing this until something happens and then, and then it all you have to tell us it. you have to tell us about the day you stopped doing it though <laughs> yeah. like January 6th like so I started in, 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 in the end of November and started ramping it up I'm like okay you so I did bigger. everything yeah I did <laughs> you got bigger. um you know but yeah but then you know then I can put stops on them and stuff like that so I'm gonna be yeah. like all right I'm getting out at 2x or 3x or whatever right but then um I have a day job. I can't watch them all the time. Sure. You know, and so there's all these things that kind of had like everything. Uh, it, it seemed like he was like, you know, the gravy train kind of thing. I'm like, okay, well, again, I'm not a genius. So I'm, I'm going to keep thinking like, well, it's still working. And then 
it ended up like a five thousand dollar loss one day or something, and it just kind of it yeah. just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then um, one day it was like down twenty k, and then I for, I forgot, fortunately forgot to take off my long call that was protecting me. Forgot, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is great because it shot and blew past. So I had you know twenty contracts on or whatever. I get out of the get out of the short side realize this gigantic loss and then it marches forward and blows right past and yeah. i got and at that point i'm like all right nope and now <laughs> i'm only down at two or three contracts where they're kind of synthetic naked where they're like really wide but i only do like two or three so um, you're still doing it way smaller though i went back smaller okay. and now it's the other way now it's like because of the directionality is so crazy in the market yeah it is now actually is zero or one or actually i can do it because i can do it every day i go zero or one one day t one dte uh -huh. and it's purely directional it's buying a call buying a put and well, put the brackets on really tight and that's what i'm at right now oh i, a, I started buying. i started doing them and uh was experiencing some success so i thought well i'll set a goal just to pay my mortgage with uh zero dte and then it started not working and then I, then I stopped doing it for a while yesterday I thought well I'll do one it's, I woke up early on Friday and so I did it in my IRA because I have some because it takes up a lot of buying power as with, depending upon what what your spread is so uh, and I, I know Tammy uh, Chil Chambliss, um, who's yeah. kind of the advocate yeah. for it on Facebook and David's son too David's David son, son is, and, yeah. and Mike and I have both talked to Tammy and I talk to David and kind of consider them friends. I've had lunch with Tammy a couple of times. So, you know, I followed Tammy's, her back testing and things and read her work. So yesterday I, 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 I started off, I bought the best put I could get at five cents. And then I sold, I think a five Delta put against it, uh, collected a, like a buck Oh five, you know, and it, and then, uh, then I did the call and kind of did a call for like 33 cents and just did three, I did three contracts and it stopped out in the afternoon on the put side. And then I decided to put another one on and it, it got stopped out. So when I first go back, uh, even though it's supposed to have like a 80, 80 to 85% probability of profit, uh, you know, I got stopped out twice. So I ended up, I guess losing about 900 bucks yesterday. Um, so it's kind of like, well, maybe, I don't know if I can make this work for me. So every now and then I'll do something that I consider a little bet. Um, it's almost uh, like an experiment to see if I want to continue doing it. So I think for me, jury's still out on zero DTs. I won't say I won't try them again, but uh, it doesn't seem that I can make it work consistently. Yeah, what's, uh, the, e what's the EV on that? Yeah, what's the expected value on that, right? Well, what one of the things I did when it was working, so I had time. So that's one thing that's like I could be right. at my computer or whatever. The other thing was that one that I was learning from one guy because he was another, I forget his name, but he, he disappeared from the, the Facebook group, group. That So you basically, if you have nothing on else on SPX, let's say, and you can have a clear uh, delta reading on it, so nothing else gumming, gumming it up. You basically try to keep that delta at like under 80. That's what I did. So no matter oh, what happened, so no matter what happened, it was like plus minus 80. So if it starts going against you, I would add, I would add, maybe they're cheap, you know, really, maybe they're really narrow call spreads or narrow, very narrow put spreads, uh, you know, so they'd be adjusted somewhere, but I would always try to get it under 80. And on those days, it would be ridiculous. Those were like $6,000 days where it'd just be like, you just pile on everything. And if some go in the money, so what? You've made, you know, you put on the extra delta to kind of neutralize. Uh, so you're either buying or selling additional ones to adjust your delta? Yep. It was actually only only selling new spreads. Sometimes uh, I would like... So you're selling a new spread to change your delta to the way you wanted it. Uh, yeah, just you because it's a new delta neutral trade, right? So I would just yeah. keep piling on. And at some point... Obviously, I you know run out of buying power eventually. I mean, some of these trades, literally, it's like seventy k buying power for this one trade. Right. But, but so the but the thing is, it's that's not seventy k in risk. 
Yeah, I guess really. That. Yeah, you know, it's so um, it's just what yeah. they're holding to manage the brokerage right. risk. Right, and so and and so realizing that, and 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 you know, my finger on the button. And this is actually before the brackets were in. So um, it, uh, then later, when brackets came on the platform, I was able to to use that to be like, okay, well, two or three x. Then I started to notice three x isn't even real. Real, that's not even viable because it's gone down to three x. Like early in the morning, if it swings a little bit, you'll you'll hit a three X loss. You'll be stopped out, and then you'll go up to your calls, and your the calls will stop out at three X, and then it will sink back and be right back in the middle. Yeah. And like, well, if I would have left it, it would have been fine. Um, granted, so there's always that weird thing, like, well, are you? Is it going to be in or out? And there's that whole game, you know, the whole game, whole stock market game. But then keep just looking at your delta, um, and you know levering in lever you know la layering or whatever and call it buying tranches on both sides getting in and out and kind of so you kind of dip your toes in and then you then you just manage delta the rest of the day and you just you basically take losses or not and maybe you have a zero day and there was some cases where i'd be like you know what this is not going the way i want to go i'm just going to get out and and then you know only down 100 or something like that yeah uh tammy but, tammy told me that she got a call yesterday from a person that said uh you know i'm trading these zero dtes uh i'm down seven thousand dollars uh what do i do you know and it's like how long have you been trading um a couple months you know and so she, that's kind of why she put that whole thing on facebook about an analogy to flying and uh, you know i don't know use stock losses and because I think she wants to help people, but at the same time, she feels bad when some newbies really get hurt doing the strategy. Yeah, but it's it's tempting, but I'm I'm now I'm a little more directional uh, just because the it I think the zero DTEs I'll wait till it's a slow grind up and and VIX is eleven. Then I know they work. Yeah. I think that's I think well, that's when they work, and I I was fine with. You know, uh, that, that's what I could do. So I think, I think it could work, and, and I'm, I'm tempted to try it. If VIX ever gets back to 11 or something, I'm tempted just to, okay. to, to give it a shot. See, Tammy well, tends to think that you, you make more premium when the VIX is high, so you, you, you still do it. But she's kind of a uh, – that's kind of her go-to go strategy. Um, I've been – I get short by selling poor man's naked puts uh, – kind of to, to adjust mine and I had a whole kind of coronavirus trades where I was bearish on uh, casinos, um, uh, cruise ships. Um, you know, Mike and I have kind of done some things to short uh, Chipotle, which we can't believe kind of is as high as it is, but, and I've really gotten hurt by doing some shorting of Tesla. I know Mike tends to be more long Tesla, but I think it's more of a cult-like following. Um, with, and and at, at its core, I'm still a fundamentals guy because I still believe that uh, in some of the core fundamentals of stuff. I, I don't tend to put – for years, I tried um, kind of charts and couldn't make any of that work for me. So finally, I just uh, – and I'm not saying that other people can't, and I'm open to changing my mind if people can show me some good indicators on charts that are reliable, but I just haven't been able to make it work for me. Right, so there, <clears throat> there are folks that, um, excuse me, I'm eating lunch here. There are folks that use options because they're stock pickers, right? They right. buy calls, they buy puts, they do covered calls, they do covered puts. Um, I'm, I'm a terrible stock picker, so I don't do that. Although I told you I trade indexes, so I'm trading index action, right? Really changes. For services all over the place that'll sell you, uh, um, right? Call, or not calls, what is it? Um, signals or whatever, right? It's a good time to buy Disney calls. Right. Yeah, I think. But I do do it in a very chicken shit kind of way, right? Like I sold some puts in Disney, but they're so far out of the money that you guys wouldn't even do it, probably. right? Right. Like I want that moat. 
I don't know where Disney is, 115 bucks. Yeah. You know, I'd be selling like an 80 foot, right? Which is 10 Delta. I don't okay. know if those numbers are right, but you know. You'd, and, you'd be uh, very happy at owning Disney at 80. Yeah, and I'd even take it. Yeah. At 80, I take 100 shares at 80. But what usually happens is when I get 50, 50 percent of max profit, I just close it out for some board, right? Yeah. Well, eighty. So an eighty Disney put right now for thirty four DTE is only basically forty bucks. Yeah, I'd sell that. Really? Yeah. Now that's that. I can't even get out of bed for that. Like I would. I would <laughs> rather. I would rather buy that. I would rather buy it or wait till it is eighty five and then sell it. Like that. That seems like that. Because it. You, well, yes. Go ahead. And you know, I get tired of looking at the spiders. So I do a little something extra every once in a while. Um, and I'll take 40 bucks. I'll give you my address. Send me this. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and um, my guess is that's, that's not the only thing you're doing, John. So if you add 40 times, you know, 20 other things you're doing and do that every I've got, month. I've got some pretty, pretty big exposure in spy puts, ES puts, I mean, spy options. Uh, just Short along. Playing both sides. Usually, I just play the put side, but right now the call side is working. So spy and ES. It was a. Uh, it, it was. It's. I want to ask you guys. Uh, I, I asked all my buddies this that that trade. You know, have you guys? I, I think as taste trade followers, we're all pretty active, but would you guys say you guys are more active or less active during this whole pandemic? Uh, I had a few friends that follow Tasty Trade like with me, but uh, they've just been less active now because they, they, they're kind of understanding that no one really knows what's happening. And uh, especially with the market, just, you know, uh, disconnecting itself from reality. They, they, they're, they're, to, they're following the belief that, that it's better to just, you know, they're, they're starting to just buy stocks and, and maybe as a follow-up, ask you guys, you know, have you, when's the last time you guys actually just bought stock? And uh, well, yeah. There's like multiple questions that you asked there. One is uh, how active are we being? And second, uh, and I, I think if you're a buy and hold guy, it makes sense for some of these guys just to sit on their hands. Uh, but if you're trading options, for me, I've, I would say I've been equally active. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got 50 trades yesterday. 50. <laughs> 50. Uh, and I probably... <laughs> I pro yeah. I probably put, do uh, two to three trades a day, multiple legs, but do it in... 10 different accounts. But Timothy, aren't you saying, aren't, didn't you say you're, you're loading up on puts right now? Yeah, right now I am, but it still doesn't like, there's just, there's so much opportunity. Like, so yeah, but right now I'm, I'm doing the puts, but also there is the, uh, I play with SPX a bunch. Now it's not the zero DT per se, because I'm, it's, they're more directional. It's, that's not, I'm not, it's not, they're not theta trades. They're purely directional. I pop in, uh, let's say I buy, um, you know, 40, 40 Delta puts. I see if they make money. If they do, I let them ride. And I, then if they, if they start making profit, I start moving stops. And that has, that has, I've recovered lots of money from that recently. So, um, sometimes it doesn't work and then I, then I just get stopped out, but it's like $300 on a, on a bad one. But with these moves are, these moves are crazy. Yeah. So what well, I, I, I'm gonna, oh. Oh, so, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. No, keep going. Oh, I'm just saying, like, I, the tasty trade thing, like, I kind of going to go back to that a little bit. Like, I got tired of having, like, not having, it, like, having all this indecision. Like, I watched my account melt on March 25th or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. And I'm just like, oh, this sucks. Oh, this, it'll come back. It sucks. It'll come back. Meanwhile, I have an NQ, you know, one NQ contract on that's just disintegrating. And it even went, then, you know, then, then it's, it's profit went negative. And I'm like, Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll sell some, I'll sell some puts against it. And then it gets worse and worse and worse. It, it'll be fine. And then I, um, then I watched this thing go all the way back up. <laughs> it yeah, didn't do yeah. anything. And then I was like, all right, I'm being dumb. 
I'm just, I got to, you know, let go of everything I had been doing because it wasn't working, obviously. So, um, so now it's all directional. So, so it was 50, but like relative to what? So previously, how many trades do you usually do um, a day? Well, let me look, I'll click on my history uh, transactions. It's a year to date. I have probably $14,000 in fees and commissions. So you can imagine how many trades that is. Mm. Oh, okay. Timothy, does, um, does, so I can't, I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Does neg buying puts, does your negative theta decay uh, bother you at all? Nope. Because the, so again, I, I so here's what I did. I'm, uh, and again, all grains of salt, everyone. I mean, this sure. is I just something I'm trying. I can afford it. You know, it's the kind of thing I can afford. So um, again, I watched Big Short a million times. Uh, Bill Ackerman, right? He just did that credit default swap um, in March and made $2 billion and whatever. And also uh, Jamie Mai and, you know, from the original Big Short as well. But I was digging into all those guys and what they were doing. So like Cornwall would go look for badly priced options, right? So, um, and I've also actually, I'm going to post this on Slack at some point, um, but I read all the Market Wizards books and the Hedge Fund Wizard books. Uh, if you've heard of, like, they don't give specific strategies. They just give like mentality. And I kept, no one there is going like, oh yeah, I sell strangles. Like <laughs> a, a lot of, like, like half of the guys are, are technical chart readers and the other guys are fundamental. Okay. I don't do those trades. Okay. I, I will tell you, do you follow um, Don Kaufman at Theo Trade? Who? Don Kaufman. Don, Don, Don Kaufman. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have watched some of his stuff. I wouldn't consider myself a follower, uh, but I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah. He was great. He was with Thinkorswim and uh, he's a friend of Tom's and all that, but they've gone separate ways. Uh, you should watch his weekly videos. Like this weekend, he put out a, thing on YouTube. So go look at Theo Trade, Don Kaufman's thing. Anyway, uh, sometimes he flips around. He follows the SPX weekly expected move, right? So on Friday, you can see seven days later what the expected move is for SPX. And when he thinks the options are pricing in a, an expected move that's too low, he will be buying Vega and premium in the form of ratio back spreads, right? Tasty Trade talks about selling ratio spreads, but if you turn that around and buy those spreads, it's a ratio back spread and you profit for outsized movement in the underlying. Is it positive um, theta? No, no, right? It's probably negative theta. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah. Correct. It, would you consider Don Kaufman more of a technical trader, or is he? Because uh, it seems like he use is reads more charts. Yeah, he's he's quantitative in the sense he calls himself a quantitative trader because he knows a lot about the numbers of what goes on in portfolios and how positions work and what's going to happen if this changes and that changes, and that's a huge difference because. Tom Sosnoff is essentially, um, what's the right word? He knows nothing about quantitative stuff. Yeah, he's not the math he, guy. He really doesn't. Right. Yeah. Um, he's kind of a practitioner uh, without understanding kind of how, how it works. But um, have you ever subscribed to Don Kaufman's stuff? No. No, no, no. no. You just watch think I think for $49 a month, there is a huge library. You get um, live trading room. Uh, you know, what are we doing today? What are we doing this week? I think it's a great thing in general, but uh, not for me. Do, yeah. do you guys, now, uh, now that you bring that up, do you guys subscribe to anybody right now that, that, that you think is worth, you know, kind of the... I subscribe to uh, Slope Charts, Slope of Hope. Oh, um, Tim. 
Yeah. Because I just like the charting program. And uh, there's a couple of little features in there. Can't you, don't you get that on TOS? I like sure. the charting program. It's nice and clean and visually pleasing. And uh, I think it's worth $29 a month. What about, what about you guys? Have you got any success, John and Tim, Timothy, with uh, any kind of subscription-based services out there? I don't, I don't do anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Personally, I, I already feel that uh, more people you listen to, per, the more people I listen to, the more confused I get with, uh, you know, contradicting signals. So I try yeah. to stay simple, stupid. So, yeah. you know, I, uh, I, I subscribe to some of the um, Facebook groups on, on like Tasty Nation, Option Trader kind of thing. And have any of you guys experimented with any of the zero days to expiration trades yeah have you been able to make it work for you for one month it was amazing so it's not something that you continued doing yeah it was ridiculous it was like a uh, couple thousand dollars a day in profits and i was like then, all right you know i'm like all right i know i'm not a genius i'm gonna keep then, doing this until something happens and then, and then it all you have to tell us good. you have to tell us about the day you stopped doing it though <laughs> yes. like january 6th like so i started in the end, end, end of november and started ramping it up i'm like okay so i did bigger. everything yeah i did <laughs> you got bigger. um you know but yeah but then you know then i can put stops on them and stuff like that so i'm gonna be yeah. like all right i'm getting out at 2x or 3x or whatever right but then um i have a day job i can't watch them all the time sure you know and so there's all these things that kind of had like everything uh it seemed like he was like, you know, the gravy train kind of thing. I'm like, okay, well, again, I'm not a genius. So I'm going to keep thinking like, well, it's still working. And then it ended up like a $5,000 loss one day or something. And it just, got, it yeah. just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then um, one day it was like down 20K. And then I, for, I forgot, fortunately forgot to take off my long call. That was protecting me. Forgot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is great because it <laughs> shot and blew past. So I had, you know, twenty contracts on or whatever. I get out of the get out of the short side, realize this gigantic loss, and then it marches forward and blows right past. And I yeah. got and at that point I'm like, all right, nope. And now I'm only down at two or three contracts where they're kind of synthetic naked, where they're like really wide, but I only do like two or three. So um, you're still doing it. A, a way smaller though. I went back okay. smaller and now it's the other way. Now it's like because of the directionality is so crazy in the market. Yeah. It is now actually zero or one or actually I can do it because I can do it every day. I go zero or one, one day, t one DTE. Uh -huh. And it's purely directional. It's buying a call, buying a put and well, put the brackets on really tight. And that's when I'm at right now. Oh, I, these are, I these started, are buying. I started doing them and uh, was experiencing some success. So I thought, well, I'll set a goal just to pay my mortgage with uh, zero DTE. And then it started not working. And <laughs> then, I, then I stopped doing it for a while. Yesterday, I thought, well, I'll do one. It's, I woke up early on Friday. And so I did it in my IRA because I have some, because it takes up a lot of buying power uh, so with, depending upon what, what your spread is. So, uh, and I, I know Tammy, uh, Chil Chambliss, um, who's yeah. kind of the advocate yeah. for it on Facebook. And David Sun, too. David, David Sun. Is, and, yeah. and Mike and I have both talked to Tammy and talked to David and kind of consider them friends. I've had lunch with Tammy a couple times. So, you know, I followed Tammy's, her back testing and things and read her work. So yesterday I, 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 I started off, I bought the best put I could get at five cents. And then I sold, I think, a five delta put against it, uh, collected a, like a buck oh five, you know, and it, and then, uh, then I did the call and kind of did a call for like 33 cents and just did three, I did three contracts and it stopped out in the afternoon on the put side. And then I decided to put another one on and it, it got stopped out. So when I first go back, uh, even though it's supposed to have like an 80, 80 to 85% probability of profit, uh, you know, I got stopped out twice. So I ended up, 
I guess losing about 900 bucks yesterday. Um, so it's kind of like, well, maybe, I don't know if I can make this work for me. So every now and then I'll do something that I consider a little bet. Um, it's almost uh, like an experiment to see if I want to continue doing it. So I think for me, jury's still out on zero DTs. I won't say I won't try them again, but uh, it doesn't seem that I can make it work consistently. Yeah, what's, uh, the, e, what's the EV on that? <laughs> yeah, what's the expected value on that, right? <laughs> well, what, one of the things I did when it was working, so I had time. So that's one thing that's like, I can be right. on my computer or whatever. The other thing was that one that I was learning from one guy, because he was another, I forget his name, but he, he disappeared from the, the Facebook group, group that, so you basically, if you have nothing on else on SPX, let's say, and you can have a clear uh, delta reading on it, so nothing else gumming, gumming it up, you basically try to keep that delta at like under 80. That's what I did. So oh, no matter what happened, so no matter what happened, it was like plus minus 80. So if it starts going against you, I would add, I would add, maybe they're cheap, you know, really, maybe they're really narrow call spreads or narrow, very narrow put spreads, uh, you know, so they'd be adjusted somewhere, but I would always try to get it under 80. And on those days, it would be ridiculous. Those were like $6,000 days where it'd just be like, you just pile on everything. And if some go in the money, so what? You've made, you know, you put on the extra delta to kind of neutralize. Uh, so you're either buying or selling additional ones to adjust your delta? Yep. It was actually only only selling new spreads. Sometimes uh, I would like... So you're selling a new spread to change your delta to the way you wanted it. Uh, yeah, just you because it's a new delta neutral trade, right? So I would just yeah. keep piling on. And at some point... Obviously, I you know, run out of buying power eventually. I mean, some of these trades, literally, it's like seventy k buying power for this one trade. Right. But, but so the but the thing is, it's that's not seventy k in risk. Yeah, I really. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, it's so um, it's just what yeah. they're holding to manage the brokerage right. risk. Right, and so and and so realizing that, and 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 you know, my finger on the button. And this is actually before the brackets were in, so. Um, it, uh, then later when brackets came on the platform, I was able to, to use that to be like, okay, well, two or three X. Then I started to notice three X isn't even real. Real That's not even viable because it's gone down to three X like early in the morning. If it swings a little bit, you'll, you'll hit a three X loss. You'll be stopped out and then you'll go up to your calls and your, the calls will stop out at three X and then it will sink back and be right back in the middle. Yeah. And like, well, if I would have left, it would have been fine. Um, granted. So there's always that weird thing. Like, well, are you, is it going to be in or out? There's that whole game, you know, the whole game, whole stock market game. But then keep just looking at your delta um, and, you know, levering in, lever, you know, la layering or whatever and call it, buying tranches on both sides, getting in and out and kind of, so you kind of dip your toes in and then you, start, then you just manage delta the rest of the day. And you just, you basically take losses or not. And maybe you have a zero day. And there was some cases where I'd be like, you know what? this is not going the way I want to go. I'm just going to get out and, and then, you know, only down a hundred or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Tammy, but, Tammy told me that she got a call yesterday from a person that said, uh, you know, I'm trading these zero DTEs. Uh, I'm down $7,000. Uh, what do I do? You know? And it's like, how long have you been trading? Um, a couple months, you know? And so she, that's kind of why she put that whole thing on Facebook about an analogy to flying and, uh, you know, I don't know, use stock losses. And, because I think she wants to help people, but at the same time, she feels bad when some newbies really get hurt doing the strategy. Yeah. But it's, it's tempting, but I'm, I'm, now I'm a little more directional uh, just because the, it, I think the zero DTEs, I'll wait till it's a slow grind up and, and VIX is 11. Then I know they work. Yeah. I think that's, I think well, that's when they work. And I, I was fine with, you know, uh, that, that's when I could do that. So I think, I think it could work and, and I'm, I'm tempted to try it. If VIX ever gets back to 11 or something, I'm tempted just to, okay. to, to give them a shot. See, Tammy well, tends to think that you, you make more premium when the VIX is high. So you, you, you still do it, but she's kind of a, uh, that's kind of her go-to go strategy. Um, I've been, I get short by selling poor man's naked puts. Uh, 
kind of to adjust mine. And I had a whole kind of coronavirus trades where I was bearish on uh, casinos, um, uh, cruise ships. Um, you know, Mike and I have kind of done some things to short uh, Chipotle, which we can't believe kind of is as high as it is, but, and I've really gotten hurt by doing some shorting of Tesla. I know Mike tends to be more long Tesla, but I think it's more of a cult-like following. Um, where th and and at, at its core, I'm still a fundamentals guy because I still believe that uh, in some of the core fundamentals of stuff. I, I don't tend to put, for years I tried um, kind of charts and couldn't make any of that work for me so finally i just uh and i'm not saying that other people can't and i'm open to changing my mind if people can show me some good indicators on charts that are reliable but i just haven't yeah. been able to make it work for me right so there <clears throat> there are folks that um excuse me i'm eating my lunch here there are folks that use options because they're stock pickers right they buy right. calls, they buy puts, they do covered calls, they do covered puts. Um, I'm, I'm a terrible stock picker, so I don't do that. Although I told you I trade indexes, so I'm trading index action, right? Really changes. For services all over the place that will sell you, uh, um, right, call, or not calls, what is it? Um, signals or whatever right it's a good time to buy disney calls right yeah but i do do it in a very chicken shit kind of way right like i sold some puts in disney but they're so far out of the money that you guys wouldn't even do it probably. right right but i want that moat i don't know where disney is 115 bucks yeah you know i'd be selling like an 80 foot right, which is 10 delta. I don't okay. know if those numbers are right, but, you know. You'd, and You'd be uh, very happy at owning Disney at 80. Yeah, and I'd even take it. Yeah. At, at 80, I take 100 shares at 80. But what usually happens is when I get 50% 50, 50 of max profit, I just close it out for some board, right? Yeah. Well, 80, so an 80 Disney put right now for 34 DTE is only – basically 40 bucks yeah i'd sell that really yeah now that's that i can't even get out of bed for that like i would i would rather i would rather <laughs> buy that i would rather buy it or wait till it is 85 and then sell it like that that seems like that because it you... well, yes go ahead and you know i get tired of looking at the spiders so i do a little something extra every once in a while um and I'll take 40 bucks. I'll give you my address. Send me <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and I'm, my guess is that's, that's not the only thing you're doing, John. So if you add 40 times, you know, 20 other things you're doing and do that every I got, month. I've got some pretty, pretty big exposure in spy puts, ES puts, I mean, spy options. I just Short play, play in both sides. Usually I just play the put side, but right now the call side is working. So spy it, and ES. It was, uh, it, it was, it's, I want to ask you guys, uh, I, I asked all my buddies this, that, that trade, you know, have you guys, I, I think as taste trade followers, we're all pretty active, but would you guys say you guys are more active or less active during this whole pandemic? Uh, I had a few friends that follow Tasty Trade like with me, but uh, they've just been less active now because they they they're kind of understanding that no one really knows what's happening, and uh, especially with the market just you know uh, disconnecting itself from reality, they 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 they're they're following the belief that that it's better to just you know they're they're starting to just buy stocks and and maybe as follow up ask you guys you know have you when's the last time you guys actually just bought stock? And uh, well, yeah. the, there's my, multiple questions that you asked there. One is uh, how active are we being? And second, uh, and I, I think if you're a buy and hold guy, it makes sense for some of these guys just to sit on their hands. Uh, yeah. But if you're trading options, for me, I've, I would say I've been equally active. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got 50 trades yesterday. 
50. <laughs> 50. Uh, and I probably – I pro Yeah. I probably put, do uh, two – to three trades a day, multiple legs, but do it in 10 different accounts. But Timothy, aren't you saying, or didn't you say you're, you're loading up on puts right now? Yeah, right now I am, but it still doesn't like, there's just, there's so much opportunity. Like, so yeah, but right now I'm, I'm doing the puts, but also there is the, uh, I play with SPX a bunch. Now, it's not the zero DT per se because I'm. It's they're more directional. It's that's not. I'm not. It's not. They're not theta trades. They're purely directional. I pop in. Uh, let's say I buy. Um, you know, 40, 40 delta puts. I see if they make money. If they do, I let them ride. And I the, then if they if they start making profit, I start moving stops. And that has that has I've recovered lots of money from that recently. So. Um, sometimes it doesn't work and then I, then I just get stopped out but it's like $300 on a, on a bad one but with these moves are these moves are crazy so go ahead sorry, sorry. Okay. No, keep going. oh I'm just saying like I the tasty trade thing like I uh, kind of going to go back to that a little bit like I got tired of having like not having it, like having all this indecision like I watched my account melt on March 25th or whatever like mm -hmm. i didn't do anything and i'm just like oh this sucks oh this it'll come back it sucks it'll come back meanwhile i have an NQ, you know one nq contract on that's just disintegrating and it even went then you know then, then it's, it's profit went negative and i'm like oh it'll be fine it'll be fine i'll you know i'll just i'll sell some i'll sell some puts against it and then it gets worse and worse and worse and it'll be fine and then i um then i watched this thing go all the way back up <laughs> it yeah, didn't do yeah. anything and then was like all right i'm being dumb I'm just, I got to, you know, let go of everything I had been doing because it wasn't working, obviously. So, um, so now it's all directional. So, so it was 50, but like relative to what? So previously, how many trades do you usually do um, a day? Well, let me, I'll click on my history uh, transactions. It's a year to date. I have probably $14,000 in fees and commissions. So you can imagine how many trades that is. Mm. Oh, okay. Timothy, does um, does so I can't. I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Does neg buying puts? Does your negative theta decay uh, bother you at all? No, nope. because the so again, I, I so here's what I did. Um, uh, and again, all grains of salt, everyone. I mean, this sure. is I just something I'm trying. I can afford it. You know, <laughs> it's the kind of thing I can afford. So, um. Again, I watched Big Short a million times. Uh, Bill Ackerman, right? He just did that credit default swap um, in March and made $2 billion and whatever. And also uh, Jamie Mai and, you know, from the original Big Short as well. But I was digging into all those guys and what they were doing. So, like, Cornwall would go look for badly priced options, right? So, um, and I'm also actually going to post this on Slack at some point, um, but I read all the market wizard books and the hedge fund wizard books. I don't know if you've heard of, like, they don't give specific strategies. They just give, like, mentality. And I kept, no one there is going like, oh, yeah, I sell strangles. Like, <laughs> a, a lot of, like, like, half of the guys are, are technical chart readers and the other guys are fundamentalists, you know. And, but a lot of them are, like, they put on some big trade, big directional trade and they make bank. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to give that a shot. Um, but so you yeah. look, you look for badly priced options. So I'd be right. really curious as to what your criteria is for a badly priced option. Okay. So um, for example, so I'll, I'll give the, 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 the examples that um, were right out of the movie, right? And, and what Cornwall did. Um, so it's like, you know, they noticed that, hey, you can buy, you know, effectively buy puts. Let's just keep it simple. Credit default swap is like a put right on a bond. And um, they, because the banks didn't believe the mortgage-backed securities would go to zero, then they, they were like, sure, well, whatever. You know, we'll give you 20 to 1 coverage on that thing, right? So um, what I noticed is the same thing can happen um, 
like recently, like all these dips, if you go back and, and use toss on demand is what I tend to tend to use. But, um, and it really came up with Boeing. Sorry, I was a little scattershot. Like someone on, on our Slack channel said, Hey, Boeing at 55 is worth five bucks. Right. And so I sold the put at that thing. And then that also got me going like, wow, if Boeing can crash down that much, it would have been better theoretically to own that put when it was three cents or whatever, right? When Boeing was 320, how would you have loved to have the 55 put if they even sold it, right? <laughs> um, but it's like, but the whole, the whole thing is like, go find puts or calls that seem mispriced. And Black Shoals misprices, I think it misprices those things. Like, there's no way that Black, even with volatility scaled in here, there's no way that, um, the the current options pricing model believes that we're going to have another crash. Like, shouldn't shouldn't the Boeing 100 put still be which stupid expensive? I mean, it's not right. So, um, a few days ago, I loaded up on puts on all these like basically long shots. They're like way out of the money, three cents, ten cents, fifteen cents. And then we had the crash the other day, and I'm up like now. Granted, that's once in one in a million. But at the beginning of this talk, I was saying, I think we have the opportunity right now for to witness lightning striking twice. We have all this news about you know the the, the second wave coming, a, a global recession, uh, no interest rates dropping until 2021 or 2022, whatever Powell said. Like all that to me points to bad news, and this time I'm trying to listen. I didn't I didn't pay attention well enough in March, and that's something else I'm going to try to improve. But uh, I'm telling you, go go look at go into on demand and toss, rewind to February 17th, and buy and buy 46 puts that are worth 12 cents or whatever anywhere, almost anywhere, because everything correlates on the way down. You're, right. you're, you're, so your basically stance right now is you missed the first crash and you're ready. You're, 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 you're determined to capitalize on the second crash. Oh yes, to the tune of <laughs> so cal calculating even if it's even if it's a, a half the move, right? Half the move. You want to get double what you should have gotten the first time, right? <laughs> and and which so this but these are the kind of trades that like the you know these these are the things I should be looking for and I wasn't. I, well educated up and by the way thank you to all you guys like this whole slack channel is like having this little community and people bouncing ideas all around and stuff and just bringing things to my attention has been like fantastic like all the little videos are posted the macro voices podcast all that stuff has mm -hmm. been like oh wow you know interest rates and things isn't all that you know it's complex but not that bad i can try to understand it more and the dollar and all this other stuff anyway i agree by the way yeah so um and also, Yope, um, you're my hero. I listen to everything you say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, so, so for example, uh, uh, let's see, five days ago, I bought 25 uh, 30 cent puts on the SPY. And um, for, yeah, it was, it cost me 800 bucks. So now people are saying like, oh, well, oh my God, if it goes, it goes up, you're losing $800. Sure. Okay. The return on that, if it goes down, if it, if it, you know, even gets near 230 strike is redonkulous. Like it's, it, uh, but how many times do you have to pay the 800 to get that move? Yeah, that's the key to me. It might nailed it because, uh, while I agree with you so many times, my timing has been off. It's usually I, awful. Uh, you timing is usually awful. All right. <laughs> for, for right. Us. But okay. But, but break, but I, but whip out a spreadsheet, <laughs> uh, SPY break even. Uh, where's my where's my spreadsheet? There it is. Uh, for example, um, March low was two twenty two in SPY. Uh, it was a two delta. It was twenty eight dollars on in March eighteenth for that for that put. Um, twenty six cents currently or so. Um, let's see, open, open interest, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that is, um, let me highlight this. Months until, months until break even, 104. So if you put on that trade of 
six in this one, my spreadsheet, $666. You could keep, you could basically pay that every month, let's say, or even, even you say 45 day, whatever, I mean, pay, pay a little more. Let's say you pay a thousand. You break even in a hundred, 104 months. If, 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 you know, if one of if at some point we, you have a down, a crash and how many have we had in the past? Well, in, okay. in this in this present so, so you'll buy you'll buy puts and then when you experience that crash you'll uh, close it yep and then yeah. you'll um, close it when when it's up on the first when it's up a hundred percent two hundred percent do you have rules no it's, 20 yeah. X. it's 20 20 X, X, 20 X, 20 X. so you want yeah. 20 X when it so it doesn't get the 20 X you don't you don't close it well it so I haven't done this before, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just saying I'm doing it now. So right okay. now, right now, my these puts are 175% return, right? But I'm looking at if I would have if I would have had this on, like if I would if I would have been smarter, is what I say to myself. If I would have been like, you know what, Mar Trump has brought more market market volatility back, and I got caught in that 2018 February crash, and I thought, you know, I should have more negative delta. I should be doing you know the yada yada yada. I would have got you know, I could have been, had these payouts all along the way, just keeping these shorts on. And I would have been way over break even by now. And especially on the last one, if I would have had uh, this, you know, come on, a, a drag of 600 bucks a month should not, that, that shouldn't break, well, if it does break your bank, then maybe you shouldn't be trading. But, um, but even then, if you, you could just say it's $100 a month, a, a drag on your account, that, that should not be a big deal. Because if you, if you do the math, the months until break even is is stupid long, eight years. Like he, I almost could have been between two crashes, right? And you would have maybe broke even, but break it breaking even is pretty good, <laughs> right? So, so I, I know. Well, like, I, I mean, versus you, losing all that money, right? So between you and I, um, I think our trading styles currently snapshot today. Couldn't be more different. Mm. Um, well, just when well, he's buying and, you know, he's just a buyer. It's, it's completely but different. But I it. am open because yeah. I have not been successful recently. But if you look at over last 15 years, I have yeah. been. So, but I, I'm also, I'm, I'm still a big believer in um, the math behind it of being the casino, sure. being the casino rather than the gambler. So I still like... Like in poker, I like to get my chips in the middle when the odds are in my favor. It's not a good poker analogy because when it goes against you, you can lose more. So it's the whole picking up pennies in front of a steamroller uh, kind of analogy. Um, but for me, even though it's not working now, it doesn't mean that the math doesn't add up. Yeah, so I mean – Making putting a spreadsheet on and looking at break even because uh, again the first thing Casey trade don't buy puts don't buy you know don't buy options and I still basically believe that but I got you when but I go but not right now so you're talking yeah, right you're shifting and, and also yeah but and also reading these books now there a lot of people are from the 80s and 90s so and it, 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 grain of salt but reading these books no one is there is like selling none of these big hedge fund guys or whatever these market wizards quote unquote again grain of salt everywhere. Uh, you know, different, different era. It was, they, they, like Cornwall, they bought Citibank leaps. They're like, yeah. you know what? We're going to buy the $3. Um, they're worth 350, uh, the 45 calls on a leap. And lo and behold, Citibank blew, you know, went to 50 or something. And they had like these, these are 60 or 70 or something like that. And they, um, you know that those three dollar put the three dollar calls are suddenly worth thirty, right, or forty, or fifty, or sixty, or whatever. And so that and again, I totally believe that we're we're going to crash and or go down. Even if it takes months for this to realize itself, I'll gladly pay a thousand bucks a month or a couple thousand bucks a month because if, you're going to make a hundred grand. Tim, right? Do you read, it? Do you read <laughs> any of the stuff by the Black Swan guy? No, I don't. Don't even know about it. Nassim Nicholas Taleb, you know what a black swan is? 
Well, Black Swan is a yeah the the these like Black Swan event, right? Something mm -hmm. catastrophic. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what a Black Swan it's is. Something catastrophic that we couldn't see coming, and uh, after we after it happens, it was obvious that it was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, well, Bill Ackman, Bill Ackerman saw this, right? He's like even went on TV. Yeah. And so I'm going to start like I'm going to think I'm going to start paying more like Muddy Waters. That's another one. Uh, Muddy Waters, and because um, all they do is research, and they basically find shitty companies. Um, and then um, Bill Ackman, his his credit default swap he did, and on like in February, you know his premiums are twenty seven million dollars a month, but he was right. right. So, you, so you get a hypothesis about something that's going to move, right, up or down, or right. If, uh, you know, in terms of price and volatility, and then you have to pick your method, you have to pick your weapon, right? I think uh, Tala, the Black Swan guy, he advises a, a hedge fund or two, and they're out there buying puts for two cents, and they'll do, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of that every month. Is uh, yep. and, it, and once yeah. every decade, decade, they cash in. Yep. Who, what's the black swan guy's name? His last name is Taleb, T-A-L-E-B. So, so John, are you saying that it's working for them? I think it does. <laughs> um, <'Cause> you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, how much history is there? What's the EV? Do we have a good EV? Because there's... Uh, you know, the law of large numbers, has it kicked in because he's been doing it for 20 years monthly? Uh, who knows? Yeah, uh, I had, I had a, a buddy that kind of just goes onto those, uh, that tries to play those long-term options, and, and he he was receiving criticism from, from a couple of, uh, of my other friends. That, and, and this was a good, I guess, thought process that I put myself in, and I want to ask you guys, is, you know, what kind of benchmark do you guys put yourself on? Because if it's the market... Um, a, a lot of the times he didn't beat it, but it's just that that one time he did. Um, does it? Does it? Uh, I guess. Does it counteract all those losses all those years? So, so have you? You know how how, how for the last few years, I've been able to just barely been over, like, be over the market, um, and then some some years I'm really over, and then a little drawdown. So it's it's how would you guys? What, what benchmark do you guys follow, and and how are you guys performing against the market? I'm doing terrible, but uh, I'm also give, I'm giving up on on having like so I think some people want to have lower portfolio volatility. Yeah, yeah. And I've given up on that. I, I be, because I because I'm, re I'm, re I'm reading these books and all those people had they're like stupid drawdowns. Yeah. But the next it's trade clear. they do, you know, boom, they're they're like this just like Bill Ackerman, like his hedge fund lost shit tons. Except he didn't because he put on one credit default swap and two point one billion dollars later he's fine. Yeah. Like and that's a bigger trade than um, Michael Burry. Some of, that, some of that might be okay when you're thirty five years old, but not when you're seven. Yeah. No. Um I I like to benchmark against the spy or the QQQ. Uh you know, in two thousand nineteen I had some accounts that did uh, 37% and some accounts that did 100%. Um, this year, and I've got some accounts that are down 15%, um, and some of them that are down 40%. Yeah. So, right. yeah, that's kind of, uh, for me, um, long term, my, my goal is any, you know, is, is, 15 yeah so, so for me my I, it's pretty interesting for me i you know i'm i'm an options trader at heart but apparently i'm i might be a better stock picker to be honest because uh you know i i have long stock holdings and mostly tech because i'm in tech right now and you know those are basically saving me right now and, and that's that's why I'm ahead of the market right now. It's most of my long stock holdings because my options trading has not been that good. But um, for me, I, I don't, honestly, I don't think, um, I think the size of your account actually matters um, in terms of what you're benchmarking. Because if you have a $10,000 account and you're doing 40%, that's, 
not the same in my mind as a two hundred thousand dollar account doing forty yeah. percent. So like, I, I think it matters to like if if I'm if I'm trading you know a two hundred thousand dollar account you know I'll be happy just beating the S and P. Um, but if I'm trading a, a twenty thousand dollar account or a ten thousand dollar account, then you know you you want to kind of double that if you can, right? But you're not going to try to double. I mean, you could, but I don't think a lot of people are trying to double two three hundred thousand dollar accounts with I, you know. I usually I usually don't tell people my goals because they think it's ridiculous. My goal is five percent without breaking a sweat. Yeah, no, I, I, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I, I've thought yeah. of that sometimes. I've actually thought of that, John, on doing that with my some of my accounts but without breaking a sweat. And that's actually the interesting part about it is how, how much can I make by doing very little? That's that's the answer. Right. That's the question I was asking myself and a lot. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, oh, it, I, and, I, 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 and I, you, let me just say that um, I'm spending a lot of time in front of the computer now because of all the shit that's going on, plus mm -hmm. we're locked down at home. But before that, it was like pencil in my phone, and I go to Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast, you know, plan out a little some market open, I do a trade or adjust something, and then I go back home and uh, goof off, clean the pool, you know, jack around a little bit, and then do something else. There would be days I wouldn't even fire up my computer. The, yeah. the, the, pro the problem with that, like John, you're, you're not going to trade options for 5%, right? Because it's not worth yeah, the time, yeah. right? So and, I, get and, I get that. I get that. But well, I, and, and I also get what Yoke Yo was saying. And right, was, because my 5% my pays my real estate tax. Yeah, right, right. It, it redoes the driveway with some nice pavers, right? right? And a few right. other things, it's, resurface it's, the pool and whatever. So, well, and uh, John, you know, is a uh, strategy is built around lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. And That's for me, you know, one of the things I always keep in mind is uh, the rule of 72, which, you know, 72 divided by whatever return you can get is, is how many years it takes your money to double. And so just to try to, for young people, um, just kind of figure out, uh, you know, if, if you if you could get 15% return and you can double your money every five years, a very small amount of money turns into a big chunk by the time you're, you're uh, my age. And then all then all of a sudden you then all of a sudden you can use that to uh, to augment a lifestyle. So for me, the only value of money is that it gives me more freedom. To do, to, yeah. and to me, to to get up every day and do exactly what you want to do today, and so for a person in their twenties, I think the first, for me, the first goal to have is never to have to work in a job that you hate, and your first financial freedom freedom is never to have to do that, and then eventually the the end all goal for me is the chance to get up every day and do exactly what I want to do today. And, yeah pretty much i've been doing that for a while it was interesting when we submitted uh because we wanted to get you know numbers around that and we, we submitted our portfolios um to to our professor um to our old professor of finance and, and he he you know laid it out to us saying um yeah you guys are making 25 percent some you know my buddy made 75 percent and and they were they were it was all fine and dandy but when you risk adjust and he said at the end of the day it's the risk adjustment uh returns that that I guess show who's top dog and um, who generates actual alpha and who's just, you know, stacking on beta. Um, right. And that's when you would see, you know, below, you know, sub spy performance. And we kind of took a step back and said, okay, well, how, how long until we get blown out? And, and I know the first time I blew up my account was um, that when, when the tariffs barely started um, and then when we had that big, uh, big crash in oil the first time, I mean, like in, but like late 2018, early 2019, um, that was that was the first time I blew it out, and, and I just thought, you know what, it's it's risk adjustment, and, and I was I was getting more comfortable even with even being in my 20s with that five percent because I'm thinking, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's who am I actually beating my benchmark, and I always want to compare myself to a benchmark rather than just aim for the for the you know aim for the fences and just get the biggest return um, because I know that I'm just taking on more risk than even if I'm young. 
Um, it's just, I'm not, I can just buy the spy and then same thing, you know, which is what my, some of my friends do. They, they just don't want to take the risk and they, they're making more risk adjusted because of, of that. I think yeah. you have to be careful of finance professors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, and when we talk to him about derivatives, it's hilarious his answers. I'm just like, okay, yeah, you, he, he literally only knows uh, theoreticals, but, but just what he, he, he's really good at, at just portfolio analytics. And, and that was one thing that I know Tom, and you were saying, yo, um, Tom is a, is a practice. Oh, and Dale said Tom's a practitioner. And so he, he, he just ran the standard portfolio analytics that, you know, most hedge funds are, are, you know, record that, that they're judged against. And, and so, cause they, we, he said, well, if you guys want to act like hedge funds, let's, let's judge you guys based off hedge funds. And, and well, when we did that. What's that Nobel prize winning, uh, efficient frontier bullshit. What's it called? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot who did it, but the yeah, second generation is the, the Cap M. The first generation was um, I forgot. Anyway, yeah, if you yeah. want to invest that way, I think <laughs> I think it'd be good. <laughs> well, I, I, I think when a person's in their twenties, uh, s- swinging a few for the fences, as long as it's part of kind of a balance, but. I think you're, you'd also be amazed at just uh, what normal returns will turn into. Uh, I mean, 10 to 15% returns um, over a 40-year period. Yeah. So yeah, no, just, just try to get, you know, so in baseball analogy, uh, just get on base. You know, yeah, just uh, get on base every time you get up to bat. Yeah, uh, sure. and, and, and make more than you spend. And invest in things that you believe, um, you know, you, you could generate a, a 15% return over a long period of time. This Covering game calls is about, on the SQI or the is about making money with money. Yeah. Right? You got to have my, some money. My so, philosophy. You know, Go ahead. Some people say to me, hey, I got $5,000. Can I start? And I said, well, the first thing you should do is go get another forty-five. dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I agree. In, so in, go back to work. Yeah. And and don't worry about making money trading options. Worry about learning how you can get into trouble. Maybe trying to find your go to trade. True, it's gonna be small, but what you're doing you're doing is training for the big leagues when your account gets up well, to seventy five or a hundred or above. You you really you really are training for the day that you have more capital. Yeah. Which but you've got to doing that. You got to start with what you've got. I mean, in 1987, uh, my first job out of graduate school, uh, John Yo, I worked in the defense business. My first job for LTV Missiles and Electronics Group, and uh, I set a, I made twenty three thousand dollars a year, and I set a goal to save half of my income, uh, ten thousand dollars. And, you know, I had a roommate. My mortgage was 300 and something dollars a month. <laughs> you know, my r- roommate paid 150 <laughs> I, I bought a suit at a thrift store and had it tailored, you know. So I, but I knew how to live cheaply because I'd lived cheaply as a college student. We had four or five roommates in this rundown house that didn't have air conditioning. So I still know, knew how to live cheaply. So for young people, if I was to give one piece of advice, it would be live one more year like a college student. And see if you can bank um, a significant and save a significant amount of money, and then from that, over thirty to forty year period, just generating ten to fifteen percent returns, you can you'll be amazed at kind of what that nut can look like. And then you know, at some point in twenty years, um, you can instead of quitting, you can just slow down and um, use it to supplement lifestyle. John, John Rodriguez, I have a question for you. You, you said yeah. you're you're relatively young. And you trade with a small account, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you diff- do differently if your if your account was ten times its size? Well, I mean, first it, it, it would just be, I guess, subscribing a bit more to the strategies that that I hear uh, most bigger accounts use. You know, covered calls is just I, I keep on hearing that they're they're a lot of my friends that have larger accounts, they just, that's just, their, always have a core position of covered calls on, on big indexes and, and they, they mess around with, with other, I guess, 
underlyings and it's just the, the larger pool of underlyings that I'd mess around with larger pools of underlyings that, that are, that give me more opportunities at bat. And, and I think that's some of the problems that I have right now is that I just, I can't swing at bat as many times because, you know, I, I'm going to be putting in 10, 15, 20% of my, my portfolio and, you know, a trade that I say, I, I, I look at, I'm just like, well, this, this looks, you know, really enticing. Um, but it's just, it's too big. Well, and what I, trade I, is that? Well, I mean, anything with time, like I want to go into like uh, almost a anything he wants to. Yeah, because I'm from, uh -huh. I'm I'm around five to ten. So think of my account from five to ten. Um, for and then any single time I hear you know portfolio allocation when the VIX is low should be 20, 30, 40 percent. I'm thinking, well, yeah, I can't even trade. I can't even trade anything naked with uh with 30 percent of my portfolio. You know. Okay, so I'm, if you're you're at ten or twenty, right? So five, ten. To ten. five to ten. Oh, five to ten. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and so, I, I a lot of the times I, I want to, you know, get more at bat. And what I mean, I, I do it in in my father's account. And you know, uh, but uh, that's actually the problem is that he doesn't have the chance to practice well these, these other techniques. You can't. Uh, all right. Well, you sort of can though. With like, I mean, you can still play with like poor man's covered calls and stuff, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And so it, it's it's things like that where where I try to I guess diversify my strategy. But if I were to have a so, an account that was ten times bigger, you know, I would just simply go into underlying that trade better, you know. Well, I, like I I'd imagine right now, well, right now it's crazy. It's a crazy time to be trading. But back in the good old days, a few years ago, like you could have just gone. Imagine just. To do you know buy a call and sell you know and sell calls against it in in in, in, in intermediate months and that <laughs> yeah. probably would have been okay that you, you, you it grows slowly but that's what you got you know that's what you got to do and you yeah, still could you still been trading the spy right it's still possible to trade funny the spy. funny you mentioned that because that's exactly what you know the the first couple of trades I was doing is because I kept on thinking oh the market's gonna go up market's gonna go up I need to do covered calls. But, you know, obviously, Tasty Trader has a solution for smaller accounts. I'm going to do poor man covered calls. And I just thought, okay, well, now I need to kind of let me, let me spread my legs a little with different accounts, strangle straddles that I hear all the time. Um, and it's just, it's not possible. So I, I, I am at the mentality now that uh, I got to be a bit more patient with not blowing up my account just because I want to practice, you know? Right. Um, so, because that's what I hear from everybody say, oh, just, stay at bat stay at bat and, and i think well i'm gonna I'm, I've, I've blown up my account where i have to just stick to fundamentals that i know work like poor man covered calls well I, yeah i started at 10 a couple of years ago like three or four years ago and um even at 10 there are there are like strangles and things you can actually not strangles sorry iron condors that will work and the, the one yeah. of the main things that tasty trade taught me was how to defend the, like yeah. you know, roll the yeah. you can treat it as a strength, like basically still treat it as a strangle. Sure. So you can still like even though it changes your buying power. Like originally, buying power was the the king. I felt like I, oh my god, it totally meant my buying power. That just mean I had too many things on. But heck, you you if you treat it more as a naked position and say okay, I'm going to you know roll down this call because my my puts at break even or whatever. Like that's super helpful, a skill to learn and also right. get, you know, spend 50 bucks or whatever in a, in a, put in a tasty, uh, a think, think or some account just so you can have access to paper trading and all that stuff and just paper trade a hundred K account. And that's oh, yeah, what I yeah, did. Yeah. That, that's, that, that was, that, that's exactly, you know, exactly what, what I've been doing. I, I, I've had my think or some account since, I don't know, maybe 2015, 14. Um, and that's what I started with. And I realized well, paper trading can, I, I become a big head honcho when I paper trade, you know, and it's not realistic. And, and I, I, I said, um, I got to actually put my money behind it because then my real emotions are gonna, are gonna, I guess, yeah. play out. And, right. and, and pa paper trading can only get you so far in my opinion, but I definitely uh, agree. Um, I would go, I go nuts and I go, I go, I do, I do like real trades and I do crazy like YOLO, I'm going to do yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. then because, <laughs> um, it's surprising, a surprising number of those work out. But anyway, um, the 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 other thing is like 
add money every month. I don't care if it's 25 bucks, but oh, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. like I had the mentality originally was like, Oh, well I have to, you know, this is all I can. I sold my car or something or actually Volkswagen bought it back. I had a diesel. So they bought it back for me. I'm like, I'm going to start trading. And then I realized later, like I should just be putting money in this every month. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The, I have in terms of, of money management, I've, I've been pretty you know good at, at living still like a college student, even though I'm out and, and being able to, to add in, um, those, those 5k I've, I've, you know, those 5k that I put in this, just this year, um, I started last year with, with, you know, two, three K. Um, so I've been really diligent with, you know, just adding in, um, and, okay. Well, you'll yeah, be at 25 it, 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 before too long. And that's when yeah. things start are yeah. a lot better. I think even at 25 K, I think things really started to accelerate for me. Yeah. Well, yeah John, so. John, there's always challenges, whatever your account size is. Absolutely. Right? There's always going to be challenges. So right now, battling challenges. And I think the value comes from thinking that through, coming to the community, talking to everybody, sorting through it all mentally, intellectually, and figuring it out. And then you move on to the next one. Yeah. It goes on forever. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, forever. Um, I wanted to say that some what I advocate for some of my friends who really don't have the time to get involved in options trading, either the time or the interest that they want to invest, I just recommend that they put 25% into QQQ, 25% into SPY, 25% into TLT, which is the bond ETF fund, and 25% into SLV, uh, silver commodities. And then just every time you have money, divide it in 25% into those. And, uh, you know, especially if it's under 10,000, then as you slowly get above 10,000, you could do um, one spread or one strangle small. You know, then as it gets up to 25, you could start adding some other strategies. So it's kind of getting started slow, but in the beginning, you're just kind of a buy and hold for anything under 10 um, into those four underlines. Yeah, no, you, you've, you've uh, exactly described I guess pretty much to the T my uh, portfolio as of now since I don't know maybe February just because uh, yeah I kind of I'm I'm coming to the realization that uh, I can't be trading multiple times a week and it's gonna be those you know one two times uh, you know three little opportunities that I see while just yeah. maintaining the core the core position because I mean it's just gonna be you know split in spy split in GLD split in TLT yeah. um, and then the excess because again. I remember when, when John posted it, uh, he posted the allocation one more time in the chat of, you know, what happens in, in, in certain VIX levels. And I just realized, you know, like I, I'm not going to be able to do a, any trades with 20% uh, of my, my portfolio for options only. So, And, and um, if I, I've been trading my nephew's account for, uh, you know, a couple of years, and you'd be surprised at just how that 25% allocation to each of those four um, is, is pretty diversified. You know, he said, he, my nephew's a dentist, and he said he wanted to learn how to trade options, but every time I talk to him, there's three screaming kids in the background, and some by, <laughs> some by cuspid that needs to be repaired, you know, so he just didn't have time. So time was his most scarcest resource, so I basically said, here's what you do. Again, I remember when, when John posted it, uh, he posted the allocation one more time in the chat of, you know, what happens in, in, in certain VIX levels. And I just realized, you know, like I, I'm not going to be able to do a, any trades with 20% uh, of my, my portfolio for options only. So, And, and um, if I, I've been trading my nephew's account for, uh, you know, a couple of years, and you'd be surprised at just how that 25% allocation to each of those four um, is, is pretty diversified. You know, he said, he, my nephew's a dentist, and he said he wanted to learn how to trade options, but every time I talk to him, there's three screaming kids in the background, and some by, <laughs> some by cuspid that needs to be repaired, you know, so he just didn't have time. So time was his most scarcest resource, so I basically said, here's what you do, you don't ever have to look at it, you know, to, every time you got money, divide it in one of these 25%, and, you know, and... 20 years you'll wake up and have a million dollars yeah so. hey, hey guys I'm, I'm curious i got about 15 minutes left and i was wondering um as you guys know i'm i'm an entrepreneur and dale and i have been working on some stuff um would you guys be interested in giving us some feedback 
on some of the stuff we're working on. And yeah. uh, we, you got you got a pretty diverse group here, and I think it'd be very valuable to us if um, if we got some of your feedback. Um, just your I'll let you know that. my uh, my uh, consultant fee. <laughs> can afford it. <laughs> Since you don't have video, I can't read your tell poker tells, so I wouldn't <laughs> seriously. I laughed and um, I didn't hear you laugh, so I was thinking, okay. That depends what it entails in, in uh, terms of time. Oh, I, I was just going to show you one of our contests that we were just playing around with in, in about five minutes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Does that work, John? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, can you want you want to let me share my screen, Dale? Sure. And while he's setting up, hot stock tip is uh, buy some cheap spy puts. I'll, let me tell you, that's 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 that, that's what to do. If you can spend a hundred bucks, you'll you'll thank me next month. I, 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 I want to talk then. to you. Well, I want to I want to have this discussion again in I don't know a month or two, and and I want to hear. I want to have this. I want to revisit this because I think that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, can when you see my screen? When you make the the hundred extra uh, return, Timothy, I really I'm expecting you to post this on a, on Wall Street Bets. I need to see this. this no, 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 that's that place is toxic. I, no, no, uh, <laughs> oh. so you, can you guys share see see my screen? Yeah, yeah. trading yeah. bootcamp. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is what Dale was talking about. We were, we we're actually we were we we're having to do a contest because you know Dale's got a bunch of poker buddy play, players and. Uh, we we're trying to figure out how to way to have some fun and learn some new things. So we were we were running at a contest basically um, with uh, options trading, and um, here's the here's the current leader. Where everyone got everyone everyone got 250k to start with, and the and basically um, the platform restricts restricts trade. So you have to basically be uh, you know fall under the the requirements of the trade. So you can't go in and say. I'm going to load up on PayPal calls more than, you know, 10% of your allocation. So we're trying, we're trying to, we're trying to simulate a real world scenario with restrictions to force people to learn how to trade a certain way without taking too much dramatic risk. And we, yeah. we're, we're building the rules around that and having contests for, for people and to do that. The last contest, we ran three different contests. One was mm -hmm. you can only sell strangles. Another one, you could only buy long calls and puts. And the third one was, um, what was it, Mike? It was four men covered calls and puts. Yeah, four um, men's covered calls and puts. The one was strangles and one was just buying calls and puts. Long, yeah, and, and then the second yeah. contest we're running, you know, anything goes. And so a lot of these are kind of poker players. They didn't know a lot about option trading. And uh, my friend Mo was just YOLOing it, and, but he's, his timing has been good on on a buy and puts and calls. And he's just kind of like almost day trading it. So he's currently the leader. I'm not sure well, any of the rest. Well, of the, fu the funny the funny thing is we wanted to make this contest realistic, like, but we we made a mistake in letting um, people buy basically a large portion of the portfolio and, and puts and calls. And then we, we knew right away that people were going to buy puts and calls and, the, and those were going to be the winners if they, they hit it right. So this guy, he's basically, um, he's basically turned his, his 250 um, into 1.2. Into, into yeah, 1. yeah, but, 2 million. but do, when did this start? Uh, uh, we started, we're in uh, what day 15 or 16. Day 15. And we got about 30 days left. Okay. He well, he basically just caught that up move. Right. Okay. Right. But so that's the that's like that the, the in 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 hindsight I should have done the same thing and I'm gonna yeah, need, well, to be, need to wake up and wake up to these things. So why is that? Why is that not invalid? Like, oh no no, no it is invalid. We're, we're not saying it's invalid. I would okay. say it's it works a low uh, percentage of the time. And if you're right, you know this is what you'll experience. And you know, well, and, and basically, my my question for you guys is: Do you feel and and, and John, I'm, you know, John in particular, Yo, because he mentioned the coaching thing. Do you feel contests with certain restrictions and focuses on certain strategies could be educational? 
yeah, um, the other John, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other John, you know, I, I definitely feel the restrictions is going to be the key part because any single time we ran, you know, these paper Contest, trading yep. contests, yep. it would just be the, the the one kid that went on Reddit yep. that found exactly the one short it. stock and short squeeze and wrote it up. So, yep. um, especially, especially risk adjusted uh, 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 restrictions in terms of sizing, in terms of allocation, because, you know, now, yes, they, they'll do that in, in, in their portfolio as paper trading, but would they do that in a real Right scenario. Yeah. That's right. Just, it's, so it's, we're trying to we're trying to force people in trading in a in a more realistic way to force them to learn in a more realistic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, the guy that's winning actually d would trade it in his real account, but we've also watched him blow his real account up um, multiple times. So w it's our goal to kind of create contests that contribute to education, and the, we're still trying to figure out ways to set up set that up so that education is the uh the top criteria uh, so one of the comments i have is that like understand like i don't know if i want to be constrained but i certainly want to have a um to know all the like there's a bunch of different strategies you know like back ratio or this like there's mm -hmm. so many terms that got thrown at me and all the ideas and um of of how to like it's like, it, it kind of blew me away. Like, oh yeah, of course you can sell a put and then uh, and against it you put a call spread and you know and then there's Jade, you know the Jade Lizard the Jade Lizard is born, and so, if you do it just right, but 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 then eventually to be to be you know, when when you have that entire tool toolbox is when things really take off. I don't know if yeah. just being restricted to just all you can do is pull man's covered calls. I'd be like, eh, I, I would I would feel well. I, as more experienced well, that, would, that, would, that would be one contest like okay we're this contest we're going to learn about poor man covered calls this contest mm -hmm. we're going to trade strangles this contest is free for all you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know for people like mo that aren't really interested in learning they just want to gamble it up they may not they may say well i don't want to play in this contest well that's okay Maybe a different, I was thinking, trying to think of a different metric, like number of trades, number, like, so number, because if I think a, a good thing is to talk about special options is the, and Tasty Trade says all the time, number of occurrences. So if there's like one trade and, you know, you knock it out of the park on that one trade, well, that should have less weight than the guy who right. did, so, you know, 50 trades and made the same or... So or, we're trying to come, we're trying to do stuff like that. Like trades is here. You see that trades, and then we have allocate, allocated. So we believe that if you stay allocated, 30, 50 percent, then you're trading and you're forced to trade basically <laughs> instead of just you know sitting on it, sitting on maybe a profit and just waiting. So you know we're, we 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 the challenge of this the challenge of contests what John just said is they're always not realistic, and. And we're thinking, Dale and I are thinking, look, if we can build a contest where they're forced to do things in a way that they wouldn't do normally and, and they'll learn something out of it, then we can make it educational and we can make it realistic. It's kind of like a video game that teaches life skills. And that's kind of what I'm going for. So the, are you requesting, <laughs> um, are you, so what's the request that we participate in this and, and give no. feedback on our experience or is it more than no, that? No, there's, there's no request. We're just looking, looking for your feedback right now on what you, what you're looking at. Um, I would almost like to see a, uh, like a, almost like, or a fake stock market or something, or just like pull, pull data for some random year, you know, some random year, random month. And then, or, or or swap symbols, or make up symbols, or something, but maybe drive them with a real data. That way, people can't look. You know, like they have to. That would well, I guess that that's teaching more of a. Uh, that wouldn't be fun. The fundamental traders wouldn't, wouldn't be able to get anything out of that. What what, what would that? What, or what problem are you trying to solve? Well, then it's because then you could detach it from current events and other things like that. Maybe they, they'd have to just be like. You know, hey, if you do fifty trades, your probability is this, and it works out. If that's what you want to teach, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing. Yeah. So, several of these people have also uh, linked their real account so that we can collaborate and offer ideas and 
uh, you know, we're building something that we could eventually use as uh, as a platform for um, mentoring and offering ID, trade ideas, et cetera. And when John mentioned earlier, he's talking about coaching is, is kind of, the, <laughs> to be honest, is kind of the problem we're trying to solve is that um, we, we actually agree with that, uh, that, that people don't have coaches and they don't have the ability to, to get like in the right direction when they first start trading. So, um, you know, we're trying to build a platform for you know, coaching, education, and you know, collaboration. So Yeah. But our purpose today really wasn't to uh, spend much time on this, but just to kind of get together and, and connect and get to know you guys. So m my goal is that this is just one of, of many where we get together and chat it up kind of a, almost a tasty nation therapy group <laughs> and learn from each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think we've taken as long as we need to, but thank you guys for joining us uh, today and let's do it again sometime. Does that sound good? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I know I mentioned to you that a good time, to pop up some of these chats could be uh, New York lunchtime. I don't know if that works for people because they have jobs and okay. stuff like that. Or whatever time, uh, you know, where the market seems like it's dead and it's going to be dead for a while or yeah. there's not much going on. And uh, so I just wanted to get a little feedback from that. What are people doing, you know, at noon Eastern? You know, I'm, I'm always in front of my computer from when the market opens till the market ends. I mean, apart from doing a few projects around the house and a few work things, so I could make that work. Best times awesome. for me, though, is after the market closes at about 3.30 Central Time. Yeah, I still have a day job, so uh, 9, I'd be 12... Eastern noon is when I start working at nine. Yeah. I mean, it could maybe get maybe, maybe 10 minutes I could spare or something or whatever, but it wouldn't be a huge session. Um, but during the week, you know, week, weekends, anything goes pretty much. Okay. Yeah, when the market closes, I usually move on to real world stuff. Gotcha. I could make a uh, New York time 12 o'clock work. Uh, we might throw that at, out in Slack and see how many other people had some interest. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think keeping it frequent and short is probably best. Yeah. And then it may be a rolling group, like different other people. We might have a core and then other people might join us at other times. Yeah, and then just, if we want, we could build it around some specific topic or specific agenda for discussion. Yeah, I would say try some pop-ups to start. I'm surprised we got this many people on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been, been good. But it was uh, it was real good to meet you guys, and uh, let's plan on doing it again. Yeah, thanks for setting it up. All right, thank sure. you. Awesome. Bye, right, you guys. Bye. Yeah.